Okay, now it's time to put it all together and finally solve Schrodinger's equation. So the first thing you need is you need to um, generate uh, your x points that you want to plot your function over. Got them all inside here. So I called mine sum and x. Uh, I believe we called it make x in the video. These are the contents of that sub vi. Go back and watch the uh, the first video if you want a refresher. We obviously we have some endpoints here. We need some points. I'm going to right click and create a control for points. We need an x max, and we need a x min. Okay. Now we need to. Um, generate our y points of our potential. And we want our program to eventually be able to calculate all sorts of potentials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tab control here on the front panel under this uh, containers palette. And each page of this of this tab control will be a different uh, potential detailing how a, a particle is being confined. Our first one is just going to be the particle in a box. I'm just going to call it box. Um, but we might have atom and well and all of that stuff later. And the way we're going to use this is just call this tab uh, the potential type I don't think we need to display it on the front panel, so I'll uncheck the label. We can make a case structure, which is normally true-false, but you can also wire a integer up to it, um, which corresponds to the different values of our tabs here. Um, and I'm going to start off just with the one tab. We, I don't want to have to put everything in every tab here. So I'll delete um, every tab but the box. And we're going to wire our x values into the case structure. And for the box, um, the potential energy is just zero over all space. And then um, in infinity at the sides. But because, remember, the way we've constructed our Hamiltonian operator, we're assuming the wave function is going to zero at the boundaries. Um, so we don't need to add any, any sort of infinite potential to our potential itself. We can just literally have an array that is all zeros. And the box is technically the point just on the, on the after the last point in our array and just before the first point in the array. Um, so if I just go to initialize array we can get the size of our x array because we need to have the same number of x and y points regardless and initialize an array where every point is just zero zero potential energy so there's our y values and i'm going to get rid of this page here Like this case, there we go. Uh, it, it'll give us an error if we don't have some value wired to these inputs, to, to the outputs for every single case. So just start it with one case. Um, so there's our y values, or, or I shouldn't just say y values, I should say our potential energy. And I want to keep this program neat. So I'm going to just clean up our wires here. And, um, we can use our potential energy to um, define our Hamiltonian matrix. So get your make Hamiltonian matrix sub vi, whenever we called that. Um, gen Hamiltonian, I believe. So we have to wire in our potential energy. The kinetic energy is more or less the same every time, but remember we do have that one over the mass term. So we're gonna need a mass of our particle. Um, 
I'm going to make a numeric control for that and I'll put it inside our box tab because for other cases we might have a different definition of mass so um, I'll put that inside the case and the units are going to be in AMU because of how Planck's constant is defined in this sub VI. Um, this is what that sub VI looks like. Um, pretty simple. And um, I'm going to wire the mass up to the mass input. You see we also need the dx value to calculate that second order derivative which is an output on our make x points so I can wire this all the way across as well and just trying to keep everything as clean as I can um, okay so now we have our Hamiltonian operator as well as our initial wave function guess, which is just all ones. And we can do our power iteration to solve, inverse power iteration to solve for the ground state wave function. So to do that, I'm gonna wire all of our values into the power iteration loop here. Um, I'm going to create a control for the um, number of iterations. Remember, this will converge to the right solution. Uh, we've been putting in like a thousand for it, which is probably too many. We can adjust that later. But we'll make that a user input in case a particular pr problem is taking longer to con converge than others. Now we want our Thomas algorithm because we need to solve the linear equations here. Um, here we go. Here is what that looks like. And we need the initial guess, which is B. Disable the indexing wire that into B. All these need their indexes disabled. Uh, make sure the letters are matching. E goes to E, F goes to F, G goes to G. And we need a shift control. And actually the um, the X here, this is, we're going to, we need to iterate on this wave function guess. So this is going to need to be a shift register. And then the only other step we need to do in here is to remember to normalize our wave function so it doesn't get out of hand. So that involves dividing the wave function by the, uh, the root sum of the squares. Oops. Square sum root to get the magnitude, to make sure the magnitude is equal to one. Okay. And now we should already have um, our ground state wave function. So to check that, I will make a graph. And we can bundle our x values from way over here. I'm actually going to do it inside the case structure for reasons that will become apparent later. We won't always be using these same x values. 
um, the y values of the wave function. And let's see if it works. If we have a mass of 1 AMU, and we want to, yeah, 1,000 iterations should be fine. The size of our box is actually just, it's, it's going to be whatever the, the size of our box or the size of our plotting window here. So if we want a one angstrom box, we'll go from zero to one. And there we go. I'm going to turn off the grid lines on the x-axis and the y-axis so that it's easier to see. That looks like the ground state wave function. I'm just going to run it continually because then we can search for the excited states. The way you calculate other states is by shifting the potential. So if we just define zero potential as some other number, we can make any of our eigenvalues be the lowest magnitude eigenvalue. So Let's see, that was that was nothing. There we go. There is our next, um, there's our first excited state there, one full period of a sine wave. If we keep going, oh, I think we skipped one, there we go. There's um, the two, two thirds L wavelength. There's the uh, half L wavelength and so on. Um, almost done. Now we just need the corresponding energy level. To do that, we need to um, uh, calculate that Rayleigh quotient. So our sub VI for calculating the eigenvalues. Oops, did I calculate the right thing there? Tridiagonal Rayleigh quotient. The input to that is our wave function, and we need EF and G. So rather than wire these around this um, for loop, which is kind of messy, I want all of our sub VIs to just be in line here. I'm going to do this. I don't know if this is really recommended practice, but I'm going to wire the array behind our for loop so it can just go straight across. And I think that's easier to read. And we just have our one um, output there, which is the eigenvalue. So these should be. Um, you know, somewhere, yeah, about 100 inverse. This is an in inverse centimeters because of the value of Planck's constant we used over here. So you should probably go ahead and put all of your um, units somewhere in your program. So I'll put it in the label so it doesn't get lost. Inverse centimeters for the eigenvalue. This is position in um, angstroms. And amplitude is fine. That's unitless. Um, so um, there you go. That's how you solve Schrodinger's equation using uh, numerical methods in LabVIEW.